Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclones of Oz. This is your update for the 2nd of January 2026. <laughs> Nearly got it there Friday. Uh, and we're going to be talking about tropical lows, severe thunderstorms, and all sorts of severe weather that's going to be happening mostly across northern Australia. Queensland really in the firing line for some severe weather this week. We're looking at a tropical low potentially developing offshore from the north Queensland coastline, somewhere around here offshore from the Cape York Peninsula. This could really bring some heavy rainfall to parts of the central and the north Queensland coastline. I'll have all the details on that in a few minutes. But first, I just want to hammer home the severe thunderstorm chances across southeast Queensland. Of course, if you are brand new to my channel, please do consider subscribing. We're so close to 70,000. If we aren't there by in a couple of days, it'd be quite sad. So please do consider subscribing and come along for the journey. But let's touch on these severe thunderstorms right now through northeast New South Wales and southeast Queensland. A couple of thunderstorms possible tonight and into early tomorrow morning, particularly into the northeast of New South Wales, and maybe a strong thunderstorm or two up towards Warwick and Toowoomba. Definitely some good thunderstorms further out towards the west of Warwick and Toowoomba, out towards Gundawindi. We'll be seeing some decent rainmakers as well in these thunderstorms, some potential for some small hailstones as well. We've got a humid and unstable air mass coming in from the Coral Sea and that's bringing those temperatures down but the humidity up and has also got a bit of instability in the atmosphere and that may give way to a thunderstorm or two in the vicinity of Brisbane and the Gold Coast but in terms of Brisbane or the Gold Coast at most showers and maybe the odd distant rumble I'm really not expecting high-end severe thunderstorm activity at all today and I'm barely expecting thunderstorms full stop across the border and towards Queensland so really not much is going to be happening today tomorrow will be a little bit more impressive we may see particularly in the early afternoon hours a good rainmaker or two in the way of thunderstorms across the border ranges or into the scenic rim and this may run up into the Brisbane area as well. What we talk about in January particularly thunderstorms that develop earlier on into the afternoon is those slow moving sluggish rainmakers and that's exactly going to be the case again tomorrow afternoon on Saturday. Very uh, weak winds in the lower atmosphere as you can see here those barbs showing winds between 5 to 10 knots in fact 0 knots at about the 850 HPA mark which is where thunderstorms move around when they're first developing uh, and there's not much in the way of wind shear either. You can see wind shear about 30 30 to 35 knots. It's barely good enough for organising thunderstorm activity. And considering that there's bugger all cape as well across southeast Queensland tomorrow afternoon in the evening, we're really not looking at a high end severe thunderstorm activity. And that's the case with all thunderstorm forecasts. You can have one element that's good, and tomorrow we've got humidity and precipitable water, which is how much rainfall these thunderstorms could potentially drop. They're really favourable elements for thunderstorms tomorrow. But if you take a look at wind shear, which is kind of on that knife edge, and you have a look at instability in the atmosphere, which is what we're looking at right now, these numbers are about 10% of what they need to be for a high-end severe thunderstorm outbreak. So there's no instability out there. And to be honest, the atmosphere for tomorrow's thunderstorms is junk. Sunday is a little bit better, but still the conditions for severe thunderstorms, particularly high-end severe thunderstorms in southeast Queensland, very uh, borderline at best. And over towards northeast of New South Wales, those chances for stronger severe thunderstorms do rise up a little bit. But I have a feeling that it's not going to get hot enough for those large hailstone impacts, etc., etc. And it looks like on Sunday we'll be talking about thunderstorms having that heavy rainfall risk and maybe some small hail stones into the northeast of New South Wales, likely north of a line between Armidale across to Coffs Harbour, inland from Grafton and Lismore around the Tenterfield area up towards Urbanville, uh, if that does make sense. Maybe a strong thunderstorm or two moving up in towards Warwick and Toowoomba later on Sunday night. Some upscaled stuff with some good lightning activity as well. Monday we'll also see some good thunderstorm activity, particularly with some high-end lightning activity in towards central and western Queensland and into, and into central north New South Wales around Narrabri, Moree and Lightning Ridge. This stuff could then up scale quite significantly as it moves off towards the uh, east and we may see a strong thunderstorm or two in the form of a squall line moving into the Warwick of the Toowoomba area later on Monday evening in towards Monday night. Definitely a day that I want to be watching and to be honest for southeast Queensland including Toowoomba and Warwick across the Downs and the Scenic Rim the best chance for some stronger or severe thunderstorm activity is going to be on Monday the 5th of January by the looks of things. Definitely going to be more widespread stuff out there and as you can see if we have a look at the lightning density map here some great lightning activity is on the forecast now on Monday and we may be looking at some cracker thunderstorms and maybe even some good chase conditions for a couple of these thunderstorms, particularly if they upscale into those slower moving squall lines, which is what we're expecting to develop out well west of uh, Toowoomba and Warwick, out towards Gundawindi, north to Kogan and Roma. It'll be interesting to see, but some of these thunderstorms may be mean with damaging wind gusts and heavy rainfall. Definitely some storms that I'd like to keep an eye on, that's for sure. But in the way of rainfall accumulations across southeast Queensland, it's just going to be from showers and thunderstorms. The next four days are going to carry some higher rainfall accumulations in towards the northeast of New South Wales, mainly from pulse thunderstorms are going to be slow moving, 20 to 50 millimetres up to 100 millimetres under the right thunderstorm, uh, depending on how many thunderstorms roll through as well across Toowoomba and Warwick in towards southern central Queensland out here and into the Darling Downs and even parts of the scenic rim of the border ranges falls between 10 to 40 millimetres, Iceland falls to 80 millimetres are possible, again depending on the movement and development of thunderstorms.
Carla storm activity. But pushing it further beyond uh, Tuesday onwards, you can see rainfall and shower activity really does deplete a little bit across southeast Queensland. Nothing in the way of heavy falls or even thunderstorm activity on the forecast right out until the end of this forecast modelling here, which goes out to now Friday the 16th of January. That could change, but we're not seeing any signals for rainfall or thunderstorm activity out towards mid-January, and that's pretty typical for this time of year. Generally, January is a little bit quieter on the thunderstorm front, but it is looking really quiet as we head out towards mid-January. The next couple of days are going to be active, and we're going to see those thunderstorm risks really deplete again as we head out and towards mid-January. Thunderstorm chances appear to rise again out towards late January, so we'll keep an eye on the situation up there. That will do it for southeast Queensland and our general weather forecast. It's all tropical from this point onwards, particularly for northern parts of Queensland. Lots and lots of low pressure up here. In fact, we've got the remnants of that massive tropical low that stumped some incredible rainfall accumulations across northwestern Queensland in the last couple of days. This system is actually forecast in a remnant low capacity to head out into the Coral Sea and to meet up with more moisture and areas of low pressure coming in from the Coral Sea and develop into another tropical low here offshore from the north and the central Queensland coastline, which BOM have now tagged as 12U. This system has a 25% chance of development sometime in the next seven days, and in my opinion, that number is actually conservative. Tropical cyclone chances here are really beginning to increase across the Coral Sea, and if this system does develop, which is likely to occur somewhere within this massive red circle here, we may be seeing some very significant rainfall accumulations, some significant impact and some significant wind gusts across the northern and the far northern Queensland coastline. Details are still pretty murky as in regards to where this system is going to develop, how strong it's going to be, if it's even going to get up towards tropical cyclone status. But it's now very much a system that we need to be watching quite closely, and it's a system that's caught a lot of attention online, particularly over on Facebook. So be very careful with what you see over there. Yesterday we talked about uh, some crazy forecasts that are predicting an Alfred 2.0 situation, or a Category 4 or 5 cyclone coming into Townsville. They're just not going to happen at this point in time. Of course, anything is possible, any situation is possible at this point in time, considering the system hasn't actually formed. But we need to go on what we know and not what we don't know. And what we know with this system right now is that it's likely to become a tropical low and it's likely to consequently bring some heavy rainfall to northern Queensland. That's it. That's all we know at this point in time. So there's no need to pre prepare for a tropical cyclone. There's no need to pre predict or worry about a tropical cyclone impact anywhere across northern Queensland. We don't know if it's going to happen yet. Uh, and you're just warring yourself senseless over nothing if you you are preparing for a tropical cyclone at this point in time. And keep in mind the possibilities for a landfall, if this does get up to tropical cyclone status, is pretty much endless at this point in time. Basically anywhere in this red line is not out of the question for a tropical cyclone landfall sometime in the next uh, two weeks and that extends right down to Harvey Bay and right up to Nullanby. Keep in mind for every single location it's a less than 1% chance for a tropical cyclone landfall at any given time in the next 14 days. But it shows you that the possibilities really are endless at this point in time. So if you're preparing or worrying about a tropical cyclone, please stop. You're doing it senseless, and I don't blame you considering the stuff that you've probably seen on social media right now, but this is really not a system that's worth worrying about. So just keep this in the back burner, keep this in the back of your head, and let's look at the reasonable forecast right now with two eyes. So the system is likely to develop somewhere towards the north of Townsville, offshore from Cairns, in that kind of bend area on the Coral Sea coastline. We're likely to see this low-pressure system be pretty broad in nature at first, but really bring in an area of converging winds and converging rainfall, and that's likely to bring some some significant rainfall accumulations onto their system's southern and western side, which means wherever this tropical low does develop, anywhere towards the south and the west is likely to pick up some significant rainfall accumulations as a result. Now, considering that this tropical cyclone is likely to form on or north of a line from Cairns out to about Willis Island, which is out about here, Cairns being out uh, here, it means that the heavy rainfall is likely to develop somewhere around the Cardwell Gap and the Hinchbrook National Park area, down through Townsville as far south as Proserpine into the Whit Sundays, and we could be talking about daily rainfall accumulations here between 50 to 150 millimetres, increasing to up to 500 millimetres over a three-day period. Some very heavy rainfall is not being ruled out at this point in time. You can see this system is forecast to be a broad system for the most part and also a very slow developer. You can see on Monday when we first showed that first image, the system was just getting itself going and it takes it right out to Saturday and Sunday the 10th and the 11th of January respectively to properly get itself going. Now it looks like this system is going to kind of develop and tighten up further towards the north, offshore from about Cooktown and other major 
major forecast models are all showing kind of the same thing around the 10th of January, something developing offshore from Cairns or Cooktown. All major forecast models are kind of in that congruent bed right now. That broad area of tropical low pressure is likely to, to develop in the northern side of the Coral Sea. Now, steering flows are very, very uh, set in stone at this point in time. They typically are at this time of the year. But we're going to draw a line here which runs north of a line between Rockhampton up to the uh, eastern edge of PNG. Now, if the system that forms on the western side of this line here, this being the western side, this being the eastern side, the steering flows are going to pull this system out towards Queensland in a direction like this, heading it out towards the southwest. But if the system forms out into the central parts of the Coral Sea, if it forms closer to the line, it's got kind of a more uh, high chance of going out towards the Queensland coastline. But if it forms further out to sea, it's likely to be pulled down towards the graveyard. And that's just how the system is going to interact with the jet stream, which has moved further south in the last couple of weeks. But it's very important to understand that this, if this system does develop further out towards the east, it's going to head down towards the southeast as a result. And that really does eliminate the chance of a tropical cyclone landfall from anywhere south of Rockhampton. That includes Brisbane, the Gold Coast, into the northeast of New South Wales. And that's how we go about eliminating those tropical cyclone chances or those landfall chances when we don't really have a system to talk about, which is kind of the case at this point in time. Now, this raises the chances of a potential tropical cyclone impact across northern Queensland. But if it does have at this point in time, there's no major forecast model that's calling for a significant or a strong tropical cyclone impact. The majority of forecast models are calling for a weak system to move through, and that likely means a boatload of rainfall, maybe some strong wind gusts, landslides, flooding, etc., etc. But in terms of a real full blown tropical cyclone impact, doesn't look overly likely at this point in time. I believe that this is going to be a pretty similar setup to what we had in 2023 and 2024. Conducive conditions into the Coral Sea for tropical cyclones to get itself going, but such warm sea temperatures and so much moisture available in the atmosphere for these systems to make the most of, that when they approach the North Queensland coastline, they kind of get swamped out by all of this moisture, and they just keep blowing thunderstorm activity up and up and up. And subsequently, they can't get themselves organized into full-blown tropical cyclones, and they just come ashore as broad tropical lows with a boatload of rainfall in a very slow moving fashion and in all actuality I mean tropical cyclone Jasper for example with 2200 millimeters outside of Cairns that was a more significant impact than a category three or four strength tropical cyclone was for the North Queensland coastline. So we can't be looking at these tropical cyclones on an intensity scale and thinking category one means minimal impacts, category five means maximal impacts. It's not a linear scale. If you have a massive rain bearing system, you can have a tr strong tropical low or a category one system that's on par with the damages that a category five will uh, bring through. So we don't look at tropical cyclone categories and think, oh, this is a metric of how strong or how damaging these systems are going to come through. Uh, in my uh, neck of the woods. We look at them uh, purely uh, from a wind standpoint because that's all those categories are based off is winds. In terms of the danger uh, standpoint, we have to look at rainfall, we have to look at storm surge, we have to look at winds, we have to look at all of these factors. And we also have to look at recent tropical cyclone impacts across the areas impacted. And that's where we get our danger scale from. And right now, this is definitely up on that danger scale. This is If this tropical low does come through, it's going to bring another week of rainfall and we'll see those rainfall accumulations really tally up once again. And you can see from the 5th of January out to the 15th of January inclusive. Massive rainfall accumulations once again on the cards across the Cassiary Coast and into the far north Queensland coast in general. A very conservative 6 or 700 millimetres here forecast by the European forecast model and this will likely increase dramatically depending on the movement and development of tropical cyclone activity. The uh, access convective is normally a really accurate forecast model on the rainfall side of things and you can already see where these systems are forecast to develop. Big time rainfall accumulations are now starting to flare up on the forecast models. So we're really looking at some significant rainfall accumulations here from these tropical lows if they do develop and if they do move into the North Queensland coastline, which right now we've got a tropical low pretty much set in stone across the next 14 days across the Coral Sea. It's highly likely that it's going to approach the Queensland coastline. We're also very likely to see significant rainfall accumulations, but in terms of a Coral Sea tropical cyclone risk, we can't be commenting on that at this point in time. It's still far too early. Now, forecasts like this can leave your head spinning, so please reach out to me in the comment section or over on Facebook. I've got my messages open over there. If you've got any further questions or comments in regards to this tropical cyclone or tropical lows potential, I'd be more than happy to help you out over there. But don't panic, don't panic by, don't prepare for any systems right now. Rainfall is likely, but that's basically it. And I hope that that's put all worries and concerns to bed at this point in time.
Now, we do have another tropical cyclone that's actually developed, and this is Tropical Cyclone Iggy. It looks like a dog's breakfast right now as a Category 1 strength tropical cyclone offshore from the West Australian coastline, and it is battling a very high amount of wind shear right now, particularly out of the northeast, which is why the system has been completely shot and completely pulled apart. The system is pulling towards the West Australian mainland, and we are going to see the system approach WA, but later tonight into early tomorrow morning, we're expecting the system to recurve out towards the southwest into the graveyard, and we'll see this system here weaken off off significantly in the next couple of days. It could strengthen a little bit, but considering its appearance right now, I don't think that that's overly likely, and it's likely to move offshore and weaken significantly after about, after about day two or three. So sometime this weekend, moving away from the West Australian coastline and weakening as a result. Apart from that, it's a turbulent picture across the nation's north. A lot of low pressure, a lot of shower and thunderstorm activity as a result, particularly across Western Australia, but especially across the Northern Territory. More showers and thunderstorms forecast in the next couple of days, and a bit of a monsoon flow kicking up, which means rainfall accumulations are likely to pipe up across the Northern Territory, particularly around Darwin, and especially into the Gulf of Carpentaria, as areas of tropical low uh, begin to ramp up. Rainfall should ease off a little bit as we head out to about the 10th of January, and you can see then as tropical low activity drags in towards the Northern Territory, depending on how much rainfall falls as a result, we may be seeing a bit of a rainfall event pick up across the Northern Territory and into parts of Queensland as well. But again, details on this still pretty uncertain and pretty murky at this point in time. A lot of factors out there for the forecast models to iron out. Southern Australia, high and dry, especially for the next couple of days, we've got a weak high pressure ridge in the Great Australian Bight and a bit of a high pressure ridge developing into the Tasman Sea. Uh, but apart from that, we're not looking at much in the way of showers and thunderstorms for much of southwestern WA. A bit of shower and thunderstorm activity forecast today and tomorrow, especially tomorrow actually, uh, and then in towards Sunday across parts of southeastern New South Wales and in towards the Gippsland region of Victoria. We may actually be talking about some higher end severe thunderstorm activity through here with some large hailstones and some heavy rainfall. So definitely something we're going to be looking at quite closely out in towards southeastern Australia, Canberra, Albury, uh, Wagga Wagga, all in the firing line for, the, for some potential severe thunderstorm activity. So definitely a feature that I will keep an eye on as some low pressure begins to deepen down there. And it's going to get stupid hot as well across pockets of southeastern Australia, particularly if we have a look at the temperature forecast here. Massive hikes in temperatures expected, and this is going to create some very dangerous fire conditions as well across southeastern Australia. Sunday is going to be warm, uh, especially as we get it towards the middle of the day through parts of New South Wales. Monday will warm up a little bit as well for a few locations. Tuesday getting quite warm, and then especially as we head out towards Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, extremely warm temperatures through New South Wales and Victoria. We may actually be looking at temperatures approaching 45 degrees in a few spots through Tuesday, the 8th of January, particularly around Mildura uh, and in towards uh, some areas of South Australia, 47 degrees out here actually towards the northeast of Adelaide. That's extremely warm indeed. Anyways, that is going to do it for today's weather forecast update. It's been a long one and that's the way that they're going to be when we're talking about tropical lows, particularly ones that have such a bearing on the Queensland coastline because there is just so much to get through in weather systems like this. I'm going to get around to updating the channel sponsors list today, so if you haven't already, click the join button down below and if you do that in the next couple of hours, you'll see yourself featured in tonight's forecast update. I'll have another update later today and I'll have plenty of information out on the Facebook page, just so make sure you are following along over there. Link is in the description, but that's going to do it for me today, and I'll catch you on the next storm. Goodbye.